let's see here. First thing we got to do, get this drum off. Which sounds easier than it is. It's a lot of the time they rust right in that area. You have to sometimes hammer them off and everything else just to remove them. There we go. All right. Now, they're similar to a car in some ways and they're different than others. The biggest difference is, unless you go to you know, an old car, these are mechanical activated brakes, not hydraulic. The second is, some cars have a primary shoe and a secondary shoe, whereas other ones have the shoes that are the same, which is a leading trailing system. It's kind of what this is. So, you don't have to remember, you know, is this a primary or secondary and, and back and forth, you know. Both shoes are the same. However, make sure you get the right ones for your tractor. Because Ford did change these things numerous times. So, just be sure you get the right ones. Now, like I said, I'm going to grab my tools of the trade. I did bring my pliers. Uh, break, break the drum pliers, but I don't know if I'll really use them or not. We'll see. Which I'm pretty sure you can't read that. But that's actually the forward part number. It says NCA22188. So those might be original. And with that being said, there is a chance that these things might have asbestos in them. So do not blow the stuff. If you want to clean it, clean it with brake cleaner. Because you want to get the dust into a liquid form and keep it from going airborne usually when i do these brakes i will usually take these guys off first and then i'll spin my adjuster in to get it off and then i'll take these brakes and just kind of lift them over these loops here and then you can come up here and take this guy off knock these guys off and then take this big spring here off. And all this hardware you can buy new. So it's kind of your choice if you want to reuse it or not. Basically all I'm doing right now I'm just turning the adjuster in and that just helps relieve some of the spring pressure that I have to fight to get the adjuster out. So now this spring has a hook right here that I can access. See if I can just push it and pop it through the hole here like so and watch your eyes and your face. Really should be using safety glasses doing this, but I don't have any handy. All right, so next thing, lift that up. There's my self adjuster out. I'll take these guys. They'll cooperate with me. Just kind of lift them up and over. And that's, that is just to get some pressure off of this large spring in here. Let's see if I can get this guy out of here. Okay, that just hooks in there and then goes over to that guy. So now the only springs left is this one. And then my two pins holding it. Okay. 
that spring there is now completely loose. Now, these little guys will come out. Like I said, I may have to go get a small screwdriver to get underneath them and pry them up. We'll see. Okay. So there's one of them. And that pin there's loose. There's our pin. First brake shoe. Now, that little guy goes in here. And then that pin goes through it. Well, through this plate, through your pin and shoe, and then out the back. Another clip. Another pin. Other shoe. Other collar. And then our other spring. And that's all there is to it. Okay, so now to reinstall our brake shoes, I'm gonna walk you through this process, show you a couple tips and tricks. At the moment, I do not have the axle in here because yeah, I'm in the process of restoring this tractor, so it's just not here. It shouldn't interfere with anything. I just have it out because I haven't got to that part yet. If you have another model tractor, you know, such as like a maybe an NAA Jubilee model or an 8N or really any of the N series or the later 65 up, these are going to be different. However, a lot of this is going to apply to them as far as how to install them. But make sure you get the right shoes for your model tractor because they did change. These shoes are the same. There's not a primary and secondary. These are the exact same shoes. Either one can go on either side. And I also recommend that you go ahead and get a new hardware kit. Now here again, this one here is for the 100 series models. However, this may also fit the NAA because we have two of these black springs which are for our, I would say it's a self-adjuster, but it's not self-adjusting, but it's for our little star wheel adjuster. We're going to only use one of these. Now, I have the left-hand side brake here. In the manual, both the part manual and the service manual, they call for one blue spring on this side. You can run two, it's not going to affect anything. However, on the right hand side, because you have the big brake pedal attached to your brake camshaft and all that extra weight, you must run both blues on the right. This little foam strip is on the 100 series and the 8 in. This 1000 series backing plate does not have it, so that piece will not be used. Everything else in this kit will be used. And here's some of the rest of it. So the first step we're going to do, let's open this up. The first thing that I'm going to do, and I suggest that you do it as well, is we're going to take our adjuster and we're going to fully adjust it out, pull the little star wheel out. And this is just regular thread. Just, there's just no left-hand thread on these guys. And I'm going to take some grease. I got some synthetic Valvoline grease here. And I'm just going to take and put a little bit on the threads and on this tip right here. And that'll keep this from locking up. Because if you run this in water or wash it, leave it outside, anything like that, you know, water can get in here and rust these things up and you can't adjust the brakes because like I say there is no self-adjusting on these tractors like there is on a passenger car so you have to periodically adjust the brakes and you don't want to go to adjust your brakes and they'd be locked up 
but I just put a little bit on the threads and spin it up in there. Then I always spin them back out and see how good my grease got distributed. Which you see some of it in here. However, over here there's all shiny, so there's no grease in there, so I'm gonna add a little more. I mean you can literally coat these things solid and then run them up. It's just gonna push it out the top, then just wipe it off. Then now my threads are fully coated in grease. So for starters, we're gonna spin this guy all the way in. It's gonna help us to get our brake shoes installed and to get our drum put on whenever it comes time to put the drum on. Which for me, not having an axle is gonna be a little bit, but you know, I'll be sure to include that and adjusting it when I get to that point in this video. And then this up here, like I say, just put a little bit of grease on it just to keep it from rusting together as well. Just make sure it spins, which they're pretty loose anyway. Plus, there's one other benefit of this grease. It'll help to hold these pieces together versus having them fall off every time you try to move it. Like that. While I've got grease on my finger, on the actual backing plate itself, you will see these little rectangular pads. There's six of them, three per shoe. And then there's this little hook here. Go ahead and put you a layer of grease on all of those surfaces, you know, on the outsides here, on the pads, and on the inside of this hook. And also go ahead and put some grease on your camshafts. You don't need a lot, just enough grease to keep it from, you know, grinding and squealing every time you hit the brake. Because that's, that's really annoying. Our 3000 does it and I can't get it to stop. It's like I put grease on, it'll stop for you know, a couple days and then it's back at it again. Alright, so now we got everything greased up. It's time to start putting our shoes together. We're going to take a black spring. This is kind of difficult to do next to the tractor. I would suggest trying to do this on a workbench or you know on the ground if you can, which I got a dirt ground, so I'm not gonna do it on my ground. But we're gonna take this spring and hook it on both shoes on this bottom hole right here. And one's gonna go on the outside, and then the other one will be on the inside. It does not matter which is which. So they're gonna hook like that. Now, we're gonna take our adjuster and we're gonna install it on these little notches. See what I say, it's hard to do this on your lap. But we're gonna take this adjuster and we're gonna install it into these little notches right here. And unfortunately this varnish crap they put all over the shoes make this kind of difficult. So once you get that locked in, like that, make sure it's fully seated in the groove, these shoes will now hold themselves together. So the next thing I want to go ahead and do is take this green spring. I'm going to go ahead and slide it in right in there. And that's in behind, or in behind our two little holes that our pins go in. Now I have it hooked that way, which is kind of a problem because it's actually going to go on. This spring will actually go this way. So let's get it set in there. You can do that at a later step, but it's kind of a pain in the butt. So go ahead and stick it in there right now. It is kind of a pain because you have to work around it because it does want to fall out easily, but it is doable. Now, the first thing 
And this is kind of really the only thing that matters on the direction of these things. Our star adjuster is offset. It's not in the center. So our little adjusting hole down here has to line up with this adjusting wheel. So when you go to put this on, your adjusting wheel is going to have to be towards the ground. So basically I'm going to install this shoe assembly like this. So that's really the only directional item you need to be aware of. So now to install this thing, we're basically going to just take our shoe assembly, stick it up here, and kind of just spread them apart. Kind of just slide them in and try to get this spring, the green spring, on top of them. If you have to turn it, that's fine. But just try to get it in there above them. See if I can go ahead and hook this green spring up down here. And that green spring just goes into this large hole right here. Like so I already got it on that one just to kind of get it up in there. Next thing you gotta do is put on these little collars. These are gonna slide into your holes on your shoes. Basically in this area right here. So you're just gonna take it and just kinda of stick it in there. It'll stay. This one you kinda of have to sneak in there a little bit. But they will stay in there. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and install our shoe hold down springs. Which is basically a nail. I know this don't look like a nail, but it's what it's called. It has a little trapezoid head on top. You're gonna slide that through the backing plate. And into the center hole here on your shoe. Then you're gonna take a washer, slide it on, then you got this black coil spring and another washer. Slide that on. You're gonna take our tool, Slide it on and turn it 90 degrees. That way our nail is perpendicular to our hole. And then we'll do the same thing down here on the bottom shoe. Okay, so now, the next thing we're going to do is install these little pins. And those pins are held in by these little retainers. These pins, I'll recommend greasing them. Because these do get stuck and they can be a pain in the hind end to get out. Especially on a row crop tractor. This upper pin basically falls in here at the end of the axle and you cannot get behind it so it has to come out the front. On your 600-800 with this mechanism being over here towards the front away from the axle bearings 
you can get behind them and knock them out with a punch till your heart desires. They're a whole lot easier to get out if they're not rusted. So go ahead and grease them up. And you don't need much, just you know, thin film, okay? And it's gonna, you're basically gonna go through the hole, through the collar, through the backing plate. And they can be fun to get everything lined up. You just have to kind of wiggle everything, get it all lined up, and get it in there. Ooh. It's in there, it just slid right in on me. When you put the little retainer on it, it slides on and hooks. Kind of push it down a little bit. And then take you a pair of pliers, grab these two little ears back here, and just kind of squeeze it a little bit. Kind of crimp it around that pin so it doesn't come off. Now we'll do the upper one. Oops. All the way through. Okay. We'll go ahead and put that retainer on. And go ahead and crimp it down. Okay, so now that we have both pins in, both hold down springs in, let's go ahead now and get our green one attached up top. Now the easiest way to do this is to take a screwdriver, get underneath the hook, put your end of your screwdriver into your hole, and lift the spring up, let it slide off in the end of the screwdriver, and get it into the hole. Now, as you see, mine did not fully seat. Just take a hammer, and tap it in there until it fully seats down in. Okay. So now the last thing to do are the blue springs. Now, without concerting the manual, I can't tell you where the single spring would go on this side if it's up or down. But I'm going to use two because, like I say, I don't think it hurts anything. But to put these in, you're basically going to take the side that looks like an L, stick it in the same hole your green springs in, and then pull it over and hook it onto the hole right next to your pin. So there's our brakes installed. So next step is going to be getting the drum put on and getting our wheel adjusted, our little star wheel. So I now have my axle reinstalled and everything. So if you want to see how that's done on a road crop tractor, I tell you to look at my other videos. It's actually pretty interesting. So now we're ready to put the drum on it and get the brakes adjusted. The way the service manual has you do this is they want the wheel and everything still on it. And they want you to tighten it up till there's a noticeable drag and then back it off till there's a slight drag. The problem I have with that is your tire and wheel assembly is going to give you a mechanical advantage over this. And so your drag can be deceiving. So if you do it this way, you can actually tell how much drag you have. 
which I think I got my tractor in gear. Make sure your tractor's out of gear when you do this. Because you need to be able to spin this. And you can hear my other one dragging a little bit. But the first step to do is basically to go ahead and split your drum on it. Mine's a little tight because of new paint. All right, so once you got this fully seated, you're about 3 16 inch here on your hub. So to determine your drag, hold your drum nice and square and then spin your wheel. Now, you can hear all my gears turning because I have no oil in here, so they're a little noisy but there's no drag on this drum. And you'll see what that is here in a second once we establish. Okay, so to achieve the drag that we need, you have to adjust the star wheel on our adjuster and you have to turn it counterclockwise because it's right hand thread. Well, to turn it, you either need a screwdriver or a brake spoon. So this is a brake spoon. We're going to use this curved edge here and we're going to stick it through our backing plate and basically turn that star wheel counterclockwise until we achieve a drag on this drum. On your 600 and 800, your access hole to reach your adjuster is going to be basically right in the middle of the tractor. On your row crops, it's going to be down here at about 5 o'clock position. And once you spin it a little bit, just kind of double check. We still don't have any kind of drag. Now, if you hear that sound that's other than the gear knocking, kind of sounds kind of scratchy, that is your shoes dragging your drum. That's the noise you want. And you basically want it to be slight. You don't want this so tight that you cannot turn it. But you also don't want it so tight that you can turn it, but yet burn up your brakes. So it's kind of a, a fine fill measurement almost. So you just have to kind of play with it to, turn, to determine what you think is too much drag. Mine's pretty close. I, I'm probably going to tighten it up just a smidge more. See that right there? That's too much drag. So I can barely turn it. So I need to back it off a little bit. So, that's what the sound you're wanting to hear. That kind of scratchy, draggy type sound. And you want, to, you want to hear that, but you don't want it so tight you can't turn it. Because that's going to burn your brakes up. So, and as you hear mine kind of catch and release. you adjust the brakes out last thing is these little covers these are not required but I like to have them in there just try to keep crap out of the drums as far as I know Dennis Carpenter is the one who remakes these he's the only one however they are not zinc plated they come in just like a black coating on steel those will rust. So 
If you have access to plating, plate it. If not, paint it. Because if you just stick the black piece in there, it will rust, it will break. So this will just go on the back side and cover up your adjusting hole. Okay, the final step on your brakes is to adjust your left side rod, which I don't currently have it installed yet. But the rod that goes here up to your cross shaft has a threaded clevis on it that you need to adjust to bring your pedal height equal with your right side brake. But you want that pedal to be the same height as the right side because the right side is not adjustable, the left is. But you want those to be the same height so that when you push down on the center of the brakes, each one grabs evenly. That'll keep your tractor from pulling in either direction when you hit the brakes. But you're going to adjust the length of this rod to pull this pedal even with your right brake pedal. So, first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and get it put on right here. It just slides on with a pin. And I'm going to go ahead and get this one kind of initially set. So now that I have that there, I want to go over to the other side and actually install the actual brake pedal. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is on this shaft right here, I'm going to just coat everything with some grease. And the reason I'm doing that is because I had to sand all my paint off of it to get it through the bushings. So this will just kind of help keep rust at bay. Then we'll take the pedal and we'll slide it on. Reinstall the bolt. And there's a groove on that shaft that that bolt will go into. Then we'll reinstall our nut and torque it down to 45 foot pounds. See, now we can see that our pedal heights are way different. So I'm going to have to go over there to that side and adjust that rod to pull that pedal down to about right there. And I want that pedal to basically fall right there, but return back to that point. Which like I say, my brake cross shaft is a little stiff that's why it's like that but let me get that adjusted so what I did first was I just basically turned the camshaft to put that brake in orientation of where it's not pushed far off of the drum you know kind of like when I spin the drum I can hear it dragging so that got me pretty close here. So we'll move this level. Okay. And I had to lengthen the rod over here to get that where I wanted it. So now that's brake applied. And like I say, because it's tight, it's not going to easily return. But that's returned. You can hear my brake turning over here. Then when you push the brake, it locks. So I just have to get that pedal worked in some so it'll release is all. 
But that's the last step on installing brakes and adjusting them. And it's also my last step on buttoning up the rear end, other than putting some oil into everything.